Oh. Hey, everybody. Frostfinnick here, and I was kind of searching through one of my favorite subreddits again. He, I found a nice spooky story from r slash no sleep, but the problem is it's a little bit long. Hey. Oh, I hope you guys like this one, because apparently this one's part of a series, and if you guys like it, I kind of want to look through the rest of this series at some point, too. Anyways, this one is called I work in customer service, but handling corpses wasn't part of the job description. And this was posted by... Uh... By Fell's Disciple. Biffle's Disciple? Oh. It was the blood on the ceiling that finally convinced me to seek help handling my bed and breakfast. I didn't mind getting my paws dirty. That comes with the territory in customer service, and I don't mind getting my paws bloody either. That comes with the territory of this particular house. Not even the legal aspects are beyond my threshold. I do occasionally face awkward questions from the Massachusetts State Police, but those questions never seem to go anywhere. It's almost as though they're afraid to ask. No, the worst part was trying to reach the darn bloody ceiling with an upside-down mop that kept plopping coagulated goo onto my forehead. I managed little more than to smear it around the wood beams above. My husband and I were both five foot five, and there was no one else to help us with the job. I'm looking for a job, and I can help you with that. I gooped my underwear at the interruption. Spinning around, clutching my mop tight for protection, I stared at the bedroom door. A lanky teenage boy with haunting sunken eyes stared back at me. He wore drab clothing with suspenders that looked extremely out of place. Why would you want to do that? I snapped. He offered a wan smile and shrugged. I need a job, he responded. I don't mind mopping, and I am six foot three. I looked from the boy down to the mop, up to the blood-covered ceiling, down at my bloody water bucket, and finally back to him. Can you start right now? Abel's second day was going well until he called me into a room that needed to be guest ready in 20 minutes. Up until that point, he did better than most adults ever had. Rooms were clean after being told once, he didn't squirm at messes, and he had a bizarrely innate ability to find out where everything was stored in Watcher House. I don't blame him for calling me for help, though. Do you know what these are? He asked as my blood lowered to the temperature of cold soup. They're long bones. And they're human, I whispered as I stared at the pile. They weren't here last night, and they come from at least three different people. How do you know that? Abel asked, his voice calm as ever. Because no human has three different skulls, I whispered. Please remove the cover from the dry cistern. I can't have these lying around next time the police stop by to check on a suspected murder. Abel didn't see anything unusual on the third day because he didn't experience everything that I did. I had been cleaning an upstairs room by myself when heavy breathing came from the hallway. I've spent enough time in Watcher House to know when fear is about to freeze the poo right in my colon. So I clenched up. The noise increased as I approached the bedroom door. Something was sitting around the corner, just out of sight. I held my breath as I curled my head slowly into the hallway. A splash of morning light illuminated a little girl who sat cross-legged, facing away from me. Her arms worked furiously on something that I could not see. Why do we force ourselves to look closer when we know we'll hate the answer we find? Because humans are idiots. Every one of us. 
So I crept towards her, peeking over the girl's shoulder, confused at what I was seeing. That's because birds usually have feathers, and I didn't recognize a naked one at first. She had plucked the tiny body that now looked like a writhing pile of pink skin, the kind usually found beneath a scab that had been picked far too early. But that animal was too damaged to make noise. The rat in her hands, however, squeaked in pain as her fingers flew across its exposed belly. She had pulled most of its hair off, tossing it into the pigeon feathers to form a bizarre pile of soft, downy hurt. And the little girl lifted her head, slowly turning her neck towards me. She dropped her jaw into a wide smile. There were no irises. Her eyes were solid white. I backed away, leaving the cleaning unfinished and crept down the stairs. After checking my records, I confirmed that none of the current guests had traveled with a child. I didn't go upstairs for the rest of the day. Shouldn't the sun have risen by now? Abel asked me upon entering the room on his fourth day. My stomach dropped as I raced to the window and threw back the curtain. Shoot! It's nearly 8 a.m. and it's summertime. He continued. I closed my eyes and pressed my fingertips against my temple. Did we disturb anything this week? I muttered under my breath. We disturbed the gentleman in room three, who didn't respond to our knocks and thought we wouldn't go into his room. I heard that sort of activity can turn a man blind. Not him, I snapped. Then my breath stopped. Bones. I turned to face Sable. Did you put the bones into the cistern just as I asked? I breathed. He looked back at me with those soft gray eyes and nodded. Yes, ma'am. I clenched my fists. Then I was wrong to do so. I stepped closer. Can you go into the cistern, pull them out, and arrange them just as they were in the room where they first appeared? He was rolling up his sleeves and heading out the door before I finished talking. That boy was the best employee I ever had, which is why I felt so bad about what happened next. The fifth day was Abel's final. At first I thought he would be scared by the door at the end of the hallway because it hadn't existed before. But he just took it in stride as he did everything else. I have to take care of it, he announced, his voice calm. No, I clamored, blocking his path. There are things about Watcher House that I haven't revealed to you. I sighed. I told myself that it was because you were too young, but the reality is I don't want to lose the best employee I've ever had after less than a week, and I think the truth would make that happen. He smiled at me, and it seemed to come from someplace far away. You really think I haven't understood that this is a very strange place? I folded my arms and looked down. You're a smart boy, but there are things that you can't understand at fifteen. I looked up after he didn't respond right away. I was that age in 1913. He responded. My jaw fell. The door is here for me. He smiled. Thank you for taking care of our home. He strode across the hall and grabbed the handle. Wait! I cried, not knowing what I was about to say. Abel looked back. Will I see you again? He looked at the door. I've seen you before, so you will probably see me again. It always surprises me to realize how many people don't know what's looking at them. Ooh, I love the way that story ended. Could you imagine if something like that started happening where you work? Just random doors appearing and strange little girls tearing the fur off of things and... 
an employee that seems absolutely unfazed by the horror show that's happening at his job. I would have been out of that place so fluffing fast. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy these spooky stories and I hope you like my contribution to this year's Spooktober special. I'd love to know what you guys think, so leave a comment below. I love reading your guys' comments. But until next time, everybody, bye! Oh yeah, I want to show our patrons some love too because they're awesome. Their contributions help us to afford all the neat stuff we use to record. So thank you. And um, if you want to become a patron too, you can click the link down in the description. You'd really be helping the channel out and you'd get a couple nifty goodies too. Anyways, if you made it this far in the video, then yay, you're amazing. By the way, subscribe. Please don't make a foxy bag. <laughs>